It's mock draft time. The real drafts are approaching. You got to practice. That's why we love these mock draft episodes. See how we get into some fights. See how I butcher a couple players' names. Stay tuned. Hey, we got a great mock draft show for you today. If you're looking for a product to help you with your draft, look no further than the Ultimate Draft Kit, the only site with multiple experts in the top 10 for in-season and top 10 for draft rankings, including a number three overall draft, a number five overall in-season finish in 2017 and 2018. You know the information is good. It's on point. And guess what? You can partner with us as we partner with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital this season. Together, we can help end childhood cancer and ensure families never receive a bill from St. Jude. One dollar of every Ultimate Draft Kit sold will go directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to support its mission, finding cures, saving children. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. This is Christian Kirk with the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Woo! It's extra long today. You taught me, Mike. You taught me about the Doppler effect, I think. Yeah, that's very true. It's very true. Science. The 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 sciencey science ballers <laughs> is the the that's my pet project. Well, welcome in. You can do that one on your own, Mike. Welcome into the show, the well, fantasy for footballers. People who didn't know about the Doppler effect, you don't get to be on my science show. You do show. have the occasional interesting fact up in your oversized noggin. Why do you think it's so large? <laughs> There's a lot of useless information up You've here. You've been stuffing it in for years. <laughs> my, um, my forehead <laughs> continues to grow. A lot of Bill Nye growing up. Is that what it was? Yes. Okay. If only I had a brain in my <laughs> belly. I'd have so much information. Oh, I I think he's inferring that, like, if intelligence was associated with belly size, he would be the Einstein of of the day. A rain king. (laughs) Welcome into the show. Friday, August 2nd, the fantasy footballers back again. We're doing a mock draft on the show today, and we're going to start from the number one spot. We'll talk about what it's like to be at the top of the draft. It's going to be a fun episode. We're recording this uh, a little bit early. Going to jump right into the mock draft. Uh, we're going to do it as one team, and we're going to see what, what we end up with. What, f- what format are we running in, Andy? Half-point uh, PPR. With, an, with three wide outs. Yes. And we're going to go three wide. So Two running back, of, yeah. three wide receiver, one quarterback, a flex, normal bench, should be uh, should be a great piece of information heading into draft season. Jason and will lean on his belly, and he will summon a great you decision. Can all, you can all lean on my belly. I will support you <laughs> as a table uh, for both you and the listeners out there. Oh, uh, you see, you got me. You you got me thinking about the the stains all over my shirts. That's true. I see. I I might have the larger belly, but I can avoid spilling on myself I cannot. every time I eat. I've got a real problem that I'll just make public at this point in time. It was noticed by my wife that all of a sudden, all of my shirts have like a stain in the same spot. Mm-hmm. It's which really is true. right on my belly ledge. We eat lunch with you every day, and lunch has not started until Andy has spilled on himself. When I turned thirty-five, I became the clumsiest man on this earth mm-hmm. so 35. i tried to blame my wife that it was like uh <laughs> laundry detergent that she had spilled on, on <laughs> each <laughs> belly spot <laughs> why are you spilling a drop of and why are you spilling with the accuracy of it's a- so accurate that's why it's in the same <laughs> spot on every shirt you're the Drew Drew believe breeze of of laundry <laughs> <laughs> the true breeze the true. of laundry that kind of accuracy very nice all right quick question for the day by the way Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers for all your uh, fantasy football needs, news, information. So much news right now. Follow us on there. Uh, here's the quick question. It comes in from our community forums uh, from Buckeye02. Mm. What are some of your league rules to help eliminate tanking in your league? This is an Im- I think this is an important question. This is also the time to think about it. Before you head into your draft where you can make changes to maybe how the league is run, 
I hate this. Well, let me say this. Obviously, tanking is only going to take place in a league that has keepers or a dynasty format. Or because, future picks, yeah. Yeah, because they're worried about the next season. They want the higher draft pick. What do you hate? You hate look, the tanking? I, yeah, I hate, like, look, our league of record, the league that we always refer to that spawned the, the podcast from its infancy years and years ago, that league of record is a keeper, a three-keeper league, and it ha it struggles with this. Even that great league, because... If you want to win, pretty much you need a super team in that league. You need to have so many extra picks early because people knew they were out of the running, and so they start selling off assets. So, to me, does it always work to have a super team? It's, it does not always work to have a super team. No, <laughs> um, and and that's important. You don't win your championship at your draft. You just build a foundation for that. It's really the in-season stuff that wins championships, so stick with us. But what I would offer as a piece of advice is the whole point of tanking is to make yourself better next year, right? So what I think is that the loser's bracket in you know the people that didn't make the playoffs, they should be playing for the better picks in the first round so that if you want to have a better first-round pick next year, then you should not have this terrible team that can't win against these other teams in the loser's side of the playoffs. It it forces you to have a good roster at the end of the year if what matters to you is next year. It's That's a challenging proposal for me because I, there are aspects in which I like it, but the truth of the matter is, is sometimes you just end up with a really bad team, and because of that, you're now punished and not going to get the benefit of better draft picks so you're further punishing the worst team because they're not going to be able to compete in that tournament of losers and win because they're bad. They're a bad team. So that is the – I mean, and this happens in professional sports. That's yeah. the complicated part of all of it is it's like you want the worst teams to have the best picks, but you don't want people to manipulate the system to make the game, the league, less fun. I, I, I totally see that point, but I would argue that all of the teams that missed the playoffs were not really good enough to compete for the championship. Reward the ones that were so close and missed. I, I, I would like those teams to have the better picks the next year. Also, we do a loser punishment is a huge deal. It's a yes. de incentivization. <laughs> well, uh, Andy was going to talk. I didn't want to interrupt him, but you are like, I think a... A punishment that and like we don't go tattoo, we don't go <laughs> public humiliation. Which, if you want to do that, hey, there's a lot of good go ideas out it. there. I, but the punishment has to be at a point that everyone in the league is willing to do it if they unfortunately get last place. And I, I think that in in the uh, the incentive to be second to last because you avoid the punishment, it definitely helps. Well, and I, it's worth saying what we actually do in our league of record to help the situation is we have a keeper or uh, sorry, a we tar and feather. We have, them. <laughs> we, we have a lottery. Yes. So if you finish in the bottom four, you're not ordered by your record. You're ordered by, uh, you're just part of a lottery and we pull in out of a hat round. in the first round. Yep. That's what we do. And so if you finish in those bottom four, you're not guaranteed the first pick by finishing last, you might get the fourth pick. So at least there's a little bit of, Maybe not enough for your case, mm. Jason. Well, there's not for our league. I mean, we just we know that for a fact. Yeah, and and people some some people like you know playing for next year. That's something they enjoy more about fantasy is is making the long term decisions. It's all about what you like in your league, what you want your league to be. Dynasty and keeper leagues are a blast. I mean, keeper is my favorite format of fantasy football, allowing you to have some off season moves. It, it, it's it's just it's my favorite way to play. Um couple of things before we jump right into this mock draft, which we'll be doing uh, via the Sleeper platform once again. Our show is going uh, every day, every weekday, Monday through Friday. Next week is going to be the first full week of, of one-a-days. Oh, my goodness. You know? They're in camp. Yeah. They do two-a-days. We do one-a-days. Um, they're in better shape, honestly. Although, did you see this thing in Arizona? Where <laughs> I don't know how it makes me feel. Cliff Kingsbury... Coming out, he's doing halftime during practices. Yeah. With snacks. And well, he's calling it halftime. They go and they hydrate, man. We live in a desert. Hydration is very important. That's Look, fair. Cliff Kingsbury is going to be fantastic for fantasy football fans. 
the offense, the production, the speed of play, those things will matter. They will impact. Whether or not Cliff Kingsbury is even remotely a decent head coach, those things do not those are those those do not have to equal each other. He can be a great offensive mind and a terrible coach and, and things like that. I think you would focus on snacks there. All right, look, I mean, I've seen plenty break? of videos of the NFL players on the sideline mid game sneaking things like hot dogs and like like when you when you're in a high level of performance, I like I know this might surprise you. You actually <laughs> Is this an insult coming? A little bit. It's just the surface. It's about like like if you're doing marathons and half marathons. Halfway through, you get hungry. This is this and is so the problem is no, of my life. Mike. Yeah, Jason knows what because I'm, I'm an elite performance elite. athlete. This is why I need so but, many so there's, calories. There's nothing wrong with taking a break and getting a little snack. I never understood why you. As took, long as it's not fruit snacks. Is that why you take trash. some of the show off each? Yes, day? I'm Just hungry. <laughs> yeah, I'm a high level he, athlete. He always types to Brooks says, "Switch the camera. I got to eat my hot dog." <laughs> Maybe this will avoid the players that also go to the bathroom in their uniforms. Yes. Is that, they, that's not a thing. Oh, come no, on. You um, don't no, know that? In, on the sideline. Yeah. They go. They just go in their pants, man. What? <laughs> no, they don't. Yes, they do. This is not a, I, I, I not watch. number two, but number <laughs> onesies happen all the time. In the, I've, heard room, I've heard tail. Yeah. I don't believe it. They, I, elite performance athletes pee their <laughs> pants. <laughs> they consider that's what I, me Miles Davis. <laughs> that's, that's, all, All right, right. Let's, um, do this. let's uh let's do that. I guess before we jump in, before we go right into the mock draft, um, let's go ahead and thank today's sponsors. They keep this podcast going, a free independent podcast, and we are sponsored today by ADT. Real protection from ADT is personalized smart home security with a system that fits your unique needs. It's the latest innovation in smart home security from ADT with everything from HD video doorbells High def indoor and outdoor cameras, smart locks, lights, smart thermostats. My house is, I, it's all smarted out. Mm -hmm. It locks itself when I, uh, five Ooh. minutes after I open the front door, it just locks That's itself. That's smart. It's very smart. Uh, but the real protection does not stop there with ADT. You get peace of mind when you're on the go with the ADT Go app. Features location sharing, safe driving reports, an emergency SOS button. It's real-time monitored. Uh, they are the number one home security provider. That is real protection. That is ADT. And to learn more, you can visit ADT.com slash podcast. That's ADT.com slash podcast. And we'd like to thank The Athletic for sponsoring today's show. If you've been on Twitter, if you're involved in the sports world at all, I'm sure you've heard of The Athletic, but maybe you're, you're a little hesitant. You're like, ah, maybe I don't want to go in yet. You should. The Athletic is a subscription-based publisher of smarter sports coverage for die-hard fans. The model is simple. No ads, no pop-ups, and no autoplay videos. Autoplay videos. None. None. It's fantastic. Just sports. Coverage goes beyond game recaps to provide smarter analysis and a deeper perspective about teams. Subscriber have full access to all national and local college football coverage plus stories Videos from all sports. They got tons of talented writers, including great friend of the show, Jake Seeley, Jay Glazer, Bruce Feldman. Tons of amazing, amazing writers over there. Subscribe to The Athletic today. Go to theathletic.com slash footballers for 40% off a yearly subscription. That comes out to $2.99 a month when you subscribe at theathletic.com slash footballers. Theathletic.com slash footballers. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Thank you, Mike. It's better than Makalaka Ding Dong. Makalaka Ding Dong. I'll tell I'll tell you that. All right. Little different today. Ten team, half PPR, three wide receivers. So a little bit of a priority there. It's not two, two, and a flex. There is a flex still. So two running backs, three wide outs, a flex quarterback. And we're actually going to draft from the 101. This was Brooks's idea. It also lets us talk a little bit about the decision that people are facing at the top of the draft with uh, the holdout situation of Ezekiel Elliott. Recording this uh, a little bit uh, earlier. Yeah, fingers crossed that there is a contract. Yeah, but right now, right here, you're on the clock. You're at 101. Some people like Zeke, uh, you know, take the contract situ situation out. 
Jason, is he your 101 if that's not a factor? Yeah, if he, I mean, if he was signed, he would be my 101. Just statistically speaking, I expect him to be so much more involved in the passing game as we saw last year. You don't realize once Amari Cooper came, he was almost on the same pace as Christian McCaffrey, who you see as predominantly a receiving back. That being said, when you're talking about Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Zeke, and, and maybe Kamara in that same group of the first pick overall – why 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 take risk like there's just no reason they're all great options so if you don't know if you're at your draft and you're deciding between two players whether it's at the 101 or later in the draft and one of them has a a, a yellow flag let's call it and the other is in the same exact tier of just as good go the other way so here I would not take Zeke yeah I mean my my rankings have Saquon at at 101 without consideration like I didn't dock Zeke for any holdout concerns we have not been pronounced with any concerns that he doesn't get into camp at some point that team needs him but I, I lean Saquon here I think that's the pick for me it would be Christian McCaffrey uh, Jay I'm wondering do you consider the the possibility of the Giants being not not just bad because they were actually their offense was okay last year it was do you consider it was it was like middle middle of the road uh, in total yardage, do you consider the fact that they could be even worse this year as a as any kind of yellow flag for Saquon? You have Shepard. Shepard should be back. Not really missed time, but Golden Tate's going to miss four games. Elite superstar wide receiver Odell Beckham's not on the team anymore. They might be going to the sixth overall pick, Daniel Jones, at any moment. Like, sir, does that weigh into you at the number one? Yeah, I mean, it it do, it does weigh in for sure because everything you just outlined, we know he he scored Zeke scored. Uh, I'm sorry, Saquon scored fewer points per game when Odell Beckham was out. That being said, he is a true you know, true freak of nature. You look at his combine metrics, he's not he's a hundredth percentile running back athlete in the history of the sport. He came out his rookie year. He dominated. He did that for a terrible team. He was more productive in games where the Giants lost and more productive on a point per play basis when they were down. He is the center of the offense. I'm not that scared. And really the truth is Defenses are going to try to stop Saquon. They're not afraid of uh, of Eli Manning, and that makes for some efficient, uh, some inefficient running. But it also is part of the reason <laughs> inefficient. Did I say unefficient? You, you corrected back to unefficient. We're back there. Well, I corrected to unefficient. <laughs> yeah, you did. Uh, that which is also my verbiage is very unefficient. Um, <laughs> it's true. The the but the reality is that's part of the reason he has these big breakaway plays. Right, because the defense is <laughs> they're they're not worried too much about the deep ball. They're crowding the line, and if you break through that line, nobody's catching Saquon Barkley. So I'm fine with Saquon at one. I'm fine with Christian at one. Yeah, Andy, I, who do you pick? I think I think we go Saquon here. And um, look, you're not going to go wrong with either one. Last year, McCaffrey broke records catching the ball out of the backfield. Still, was a point a game worse than Saquon last season. So for both players, you could see a little bit of regression, some some variables, but. The workload's guaranteed for both. I don't fault anybody um, for going either direction, but I think we take Saquon here. Okay. So let's grab him. McCaffrey goes two. Zeke goes three. Kamara four. Lev Bell up at five. There has been a resurgence of sorts for the Lev Bell truthers, not just on the basis of him saying he's going to be great, uh, because I think he said that last year when he didn't play. Mm. Yeah. I think he said it was going to be amazing. Uh, no, he said it was going to be his best year ever. It was not. No, it, it probably well, was. He yeah. was on the beach. Be <laughs> yeah. like, this was the best year ever. He just ever. meant it for like his Instagram. Yes. Right. Okay, and his albums. Uh, Devontae Adams, first wide receiver off the board at uh, 106. Then David Johnson. At 107, I, I love that. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, James Conner. Uh, had somebody message me on Twitter about David Johnson. Uh, keeper situation saying, do you pivot to carry on now? Do you pivot? No, to not I over said, David. No, you don't. No, you don't. David Johnson's workload is more guaranteed than carry ons. And uh, both, you know, their offense has some optimism around it. David Johnson's a better pick. Yeah, even from the carry on Johnson truther, I agree completely. Uh, Hopkins at 108, Connor at 109. Connor into the first round here. He's been, been around there. Julio Jones Good at, for you, Connor. At, at 110. Michael Thomas at 201. Michael Thomas. Tyreek at 202, then Gurley, Mixon, Gordon, dropping to 205 here. And then Chubb. Would you take him there? At 205? Yeah, I'd take him over Nick Chubb, and that's who went after him. So I think 205 is okay. about, uh, 
you know, it depends how I feel that day, Mike. <laughs> That, look, that's am a, I in a good that is, mood or that is a completely fair, a f- completely fair response? <laughs> so, I now you wouldn't take him over Dalvin Cook though, would you? I would not, and Cook is still on the board, so no. I guess I guess uh, you could knock him down a couple more. I think he is out of my top two rounds as of now. <laughs> it's so hard. Nick Chubb, Juju, Kelsey at two hundred eight. Beckham, and then we're back on the clock. And what's interesting, you know, in a draft like this, we're at the turn. We got two picks back-to-back, and we have to do a a number of things here. We have to consider the fact it's a long wait. We have to consider the fact that we took a running back at 101. This is a three-wide receiver draft. If we happen to avoid – if we didn't go wide receiver with any of these two picks, you're talking about taking a wide receiver, your first one, in a Mm -hmm. three-wide-out league at 410. Yeah, it's really – this is a – genuinely difficult situation we find ourselves in because it's going to be 20 picks before we make our next selection. Like when I'm looking at the board here, you've got Antonio Brown and Mike Evans, T.Y. Hilton, Keenan Allen. They're all good options, but they're not They're They're to me, they're not great options. Whereas Dalvin cook is a great option at a really rare to have great option uh, position. But then can you do that? Because this is, this is what people need to know when they're at the turn and this, it's harder to play the ADP game. It's harder. You've got to be careful when you're at the one or two or the eleven or twelve in your league near the turn. Do you are you forced? Are we forced into taking one of those wide receivers so that we don't end up with our first wide receiver being Kenny Galladay? Yes, I think we probably are. I mean, C- Cook is a tier. Uh, now, Mike, I want you to jump in and give your thoughts. Cook is the tier difference to me here uh, uh, of picking a running back where Cook checks all the boxes for me, pass catching involvement, goal line involvement, 75% of top 10 running backs are on a winning team. I think Minnesota's a winning team. Upside, I obviously am the one of the more bullish Dalvin Cook owners. I think you'd probably lump Damian Williams in that yes. category. But what are you thinking about with our pick here, Mike? I I'm, I don't feel backed into wide receiver because Damian Williams and, and Dalvin Cook are there. But I would go that direction because I I disagree. Where I have, you know, T. Y. Hilton is as a great option. He's currently number eight for me in a half point PPR scoring format. Like I love T. Y. Hilton, and I really really like Mike Evans. I I would man, I would probably take both of those guys over Antonio Brown, Mister Mister Big Chest, Mister Hot Air Balloon, uh, and start it because we have we have Barkley. Like we have one locked and loaded, Sir gar- Charles, guaranteed, <laughs> guaranteed running back stud, as guaranteed as you can get in fantasy football. So personally, I would be taking two wide receivers, and my favorites left on the board would be Mike Evans and T.Y. Hilton. Uh, Julian Edelman is right around that area for me. I doubt he comes back, but I would be willing to. Let's make Take a the chance. let's make a wide receiver decision here first. Okay, because we Ant- need one. Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, T.Y. Hilton. Mike, you'd take two wideouts. We we're at least taking one. I think there's no chance that with back to back picks here that I wouldn't take at least Dalvin Cook, uh, just because I, I I think running backs we see that right like when when it comes back to our next turn we're going to be much 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 lower. You know maybe a Robert Woods who to me is an awesome wide receiver comes back to us at the you know at you the think next he's, turn. That's even possible? I think it is possible. Or not, one I one of the one of the Rams. I mean one of the Rams. Sure, guys. maybe maybe Cooper Cup comes back. And then the the last name, because to not stay here forever. But the big the biggest benefactor to me, if Melvin Gordon holds out, misses time aside from new running backs come into play, I think Keenan Allen would turn into an absolute target machine. He would resurge to that level that we, we have seen where he becomes the focal point of the offense. So if if you believe that Melvin Gordon is going to miss time, I think you should move Keenan Allen up your board. Because of the long wait, because of the fact that, uh, you know, Andrew Luck dealing with this weird calf issue, T.Y. Hilton's not normally a high reception total player. I don't know if I want him to be the anchor of the wide receiver court with a long wait. One. He would just be one. Well, it's you all semantics. Ta- you want to take him 3-1? Fine, take him 3-1. No, I'm saying uh, I'm saying we're probably we're voting on Dalvin Cook here. So you're okay, only, I vote a, against. I right. vote for. So we're we're taking Dalvin. So now, Mike, this is what I'm talking about. We get to pick one wide receiver here. I just don't know how comfortable I am with the 
luck situation with Hilton's volume where I wouldn't rather take an Antonio Brown or Mike Evans, you can make the pick, Mr. Wright. I took Dalvin, so you get to pick our wide receiver. Uh, Evans, my, my Brown, rankings, Hilton, Allen. My rankings, I know it's Derek Carr. <clears throat> I know that you know it's not as – it, there's not going to be as many touchdowns I like going, AB here, the, but I would take Antonio else. Brown. He's the best wide receiver in the game. He's the clear one for his team. And we've seen wide receiver one numbers come from Derek Carr in the past, and they weren't Antonio Brown. So that would be where I go. But Mike Evans is right behind him. Keenan, to speak to your point, was, I mean, a small sample. He's played three games without Melvin Gordon there at all, but he averages almost five fantasy points more per game. Yeah, he would be awesome. Without Melvin Gordon, I don't disagree. So I, I don't Pick think is we're going to go Mike. Wrong. All yep. right, Mike Evans. I feel like I was outvoted on T. Y. Hilton, so I will compromise and take Evans. Okay, so Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Mike Evans. That's our through three rounds drafting from the one hundred and one. <clears throat> no complaints. No complaints there. Uh, Damian Williams goes right after Evans. First quarterback off the board, Mahomes at three hundred three. Seems then normal. A little bit of a wide receiver run. Hilton, oh. Allen, Brown. Fournette, Henry Mack, Thielen and Kittle at the turn. Oh, man. Aaron Jones, Devonta Free. I know that kind of – I mean, Both, Robert look, Woods has to be on the board. That's what happened. Not yeah. only is Robert Woods – on the board but Jules Julian Edelman is also on the board so both of our gambles paid off I feel like this off season of us taking the gambles during our mock it has not paid off but this one well it we hasn't ever paid the, off my team it never pays off sure well we saved the karma for this moment right here in time where we can take Julian Edelman look if you can start a three wide receiver draft with Saquon Barkley Dalvin Cook Mike Evans Robert Woods and Julian Edelman, which would be, if those were our two picks, our first five. You've got three stud wide receivers, two stud running backs. I mean, I you know, I'm on record saying I truly believe Robert Woods is a, a low-end wide receiver one, if not the best wide receiver two in the game. I believe he's the one this season for the Rams like he was last year. So I, I'm all in on, on Woods. Just to set the table for those listening, Josh Jacobs, Mark Ingram, Sonny Michelle, Chris Carson, that's the running backs here that we're in our running backs are so incredibly strong this that, is, is the best tandem if you look at other teams in this draft you could argue i mean david johnson joe mixon really strong that's another one of the teams in this draft mccaffrey williams for me would be very strong as christian well. mccaffrey and they got damian williams in the third and then lev bell nick chubb were the uh, the only other team that went running back running back but this is where you look back and you say, okay, what what if we had gone, you know, Antonio and Mike Antonio Brown and Mike Evans instead of Dalvin Cook? Well, we would be drafting our running back too as Josh Jacobs or or Chris Carson. Or, you know, those aren't the the team would not be as good. So I think that's one of the things when you have the chance to take a top end running back, you just have to do it. Yeah, and I think the the distraction can be a league where you have three wide receivers. I mean, it it can cause you to disproportionately not consider, you know, going RB heavy. You got to fill this spot, but there's so many mid to late round wide receivers that if you listen to this show, we're really excited and passionate sure. about that you're going to get to take your shot on. I'm, so my counterpoint would just be we uh, the the wide receivers that produce are the wide receivers that produce. Like I, I feel the the top end wide receivers, I'm, I'm feeling a bit safer with them, especially when I have to fill out three. But and here's a flex. the thing. Here's the thing. Robert Woods, Julian Edelman? Yes. They no, are it, top it, it, it worked out. The, the gamble worked out this time. I guess we're taking both those guys. You're doing right. So Evans, Woods, Edelman in the third, fourth, and fifth rounds after Barkley and Cook to open the draft. Which, by the way, I'm not concerned about Julian Edelman's thumb. Right. And and for reference for the listeners, we took Robert Woods, What about Julian the rest of Edelman. his body? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, he, uh, we took those wide receivers over. We took Robert Woods over Brandon Cooks, which I believe in, uh, but over Kenny Galladay, Chris Godwin, Tyler Lockett. Uh, you know, I see those those two players we took as a tier above all of those guys. Well, not necessarily Brandon Cooks, but yeah, I mean, people make that decision between Woods and Cooks, and some people go both because talk about a, a you get a floor, you get a ceiling if you have both of those players. Jacobs, Ingram, Cooks went next. Um, some highlights from this round. Chris Carson at 509. It's interesting. Um, I would. I, I like Carson quite a bit better than 509 in this draft myself. Lockett wrapped up the round. Uh, Sonny Michelle at 601. Cooper Cup at 602. 
Uh, O.J. Howard off the board with the fourth pick of the sixth round. Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson also went at the quarterback position. Uh, we're back on the on the clock, on the turn. Right now, Barkley, Cook, Evans, Woods, and Edelman. Talk to me about your thought process with our roster construction sure. right now. So, And this is the... This would be a very pivotal decision for our roster construction because here is the point where the the tight end tier, like right now Evan Ingram and Hunter Henry remain on the board. I have Ingram rated higher. But if we miss or like if we don't take a tight end with one of these two picks, those guys are not coming back and then we're making the decision go full punt. To go to punt and then at the end of the draft take our favorite value if it's a value old man or or maybe mark andrews as the new hotness so jay how are you feeling we started with saquon barkley That's, are you feeling comfortable going having barkley and evan engram as a stack i'm not i'm not really loving that stack we talked about the problems that we see right now with the new york giants and while i do like evan ingram i think he's a decent pick here in a vacuum not, that, not only is in the vacuum but with Golden Tate <clears throat> missing four games, I mean that's a you like guys getting off to a hot start. Mm -hmm. I believe that Evan Ingram will be a huge beneficiary if, if assuming that the suspension is held up for Golden Tate. But four games, that's that's a that's a good start S that certainly. he can that he can help be a weak winning type of player before he returns to just a a middle tier you, tight end. You definitely bring up a good point in the sense that I think it's far more important how players start. If you're an active fantasy football player, you're trying to win your championship, you're going to be making roster moves left, right, and center. Mm. I mean, I know that, you know, in the league of record that, uh, the you know, uh, two years ago got the championship there. I had one player that I drafted that was on that championship roster. That's the, so, uh, you know, getting Evan Ingram off to a hot start, I would like that. The problem is, we discussed this a little bit last week, I don't believe the Golden Tate suspension is going to hold up for four games. You guys completely disagree. So that might be where we differ there. I don't think you take Evan Ingram here because you have three wideouts and an extra in the flex spot. So you, you need to, like for us with the long wait, I just don't think it's worth trading in one of the better talents at, at, at the positions we need to start. Three wideouts, a flex, depth at the running back position. I don't think it's worth trading that in right here. For well, Ingram. we would be taking our flex with our second pick. We're back uh, to back. Yeah, with two running backs, three wide receivers, and a two running back, three wide receiver, and a flex league. It's one roster extra starting spot over tight end. Roster construction-wise, I would rather take a running back and a wide receiver to bolster those positions, give us depth at both positions, because if later in the draft we end up with a Vance McDonald or David Njoku – I'm not going to be upset that we missed out on Evan Ingram, but if later in the draft I feel like our depth at wide receiver running back aren't that good, then then I will. And then also, just if Daniel Jones plays, Ingram could be in trouble. Sure. If we don't want to have Daniel Jones ruin Saquon and Ingram. Um, there are wide quarterbacks on the board that we would never take here, but people listening who maybe believe in early round quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield, Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, who we all really like, or at least Andy and I really like, is on the board right now. Ado I adore him. <clears throat> yeah, I adore him. But you just don't – there are so many great quarterbacks out there that it doesn't make sense to, to, to deviate from a running back or wide receiver that you need so many of. So I would continue to punt that position as well. Running back options. It's a lot of the uh, scat back type, James White, Tariq Cohen. We just talked about Tariq Cohen on Thursday. He was my mid-round madness pick. Um, right now it's uh, Lamar Miller, Rashad Penny. I think this is, I a, mean, I, <laughs> this is a question of roster construction. So we've got Dalvin Cook and Saquon Barkley. Yep. So do we feel we need to go safe? Um, with a Lamar Miller, so we've got another you know guaranteed starter on a decent offense. Or do you want to go upside Tariq Cohen? I argue that Tariq 13? Cohen is safer than Lamar Miller because Tariq Cohen doesn't have a role that's going to be replaced, in my opinion. You, you've got a guy that was the RB13 last year who lines up in the slot in the wide receiver position, whereas Lamar Miller is is maybe his maybe his floor is like a little bit higher than Cohen's floor, but you know, 13 straight weeks, Cohen's floor is pretty good last year. I would say better offense. Um, you I, think the Bears' offense is better than the Texans? Well, for 
Yeah, maybe not. I All think right. a better offensive <laughs> just coach. Just doing a check there. Better offensive coach. Implementing a system, getting running backs the ball in space. That, to me, does make sense. Like, when I look – no, the Houston Texans have a better offense because they've got the better quarterback. But as far as utilization – Better wide receiver. But utilization of the running back, I, I do give that over to Chicago. So I would be fine with Tariq Cohen here. I have drafted him nowhere. I made my arguments against him on last episode, and he made his arguments for him. Yeah, I'm not going to force the issue with him. Landry, Boyd, Jeffrey, Anderson, Pettis, Allen Robinson on the uh, – DJ Moore on the wide receiver side. Mike, when you look at the options at running back, the options at wide receiver, do you still believe Evan Ingram is the right pick here? Uh, I, I do. Um, we, I mean, we, we have two picks, so that, I think that is a, a nice spot to be in, but we're just, we're, we're in such a different tiered world at this point. I, cause I'm, it, it also hurts me that I'm not, I'm not high on James White or Tariq Cohen and where I feel like most fantasy players at, at this spot in the draft, they would be salivating to take one of those running backs. So that's why that's what gets me to lean let to me ask, anger being one of the Let me put it picks. this way. Let me put it this way. Do you believe, because this is only our third running back if we take a running back here, do you believe you're going to be able to start Tariq Cohen in a league of this format with a flex position? Um, do you think you'll be able to start him through the duration of the season? It, do you think anything should be able anything's going to yes. change about his start, start from the beginning to the end? Because that's where Miller could go wrong. Our depth piece at running back – Miller could lose some of that role over the duration of the season. That's the way I'm framing it. I got is you. Cohen can be flexed yeah, I was saying, and can be played throughout the season. I just think Lamar Miller's I'm, – I'm fine going Cohen here if that's the pick we want to make. But for, for Miller, I think that his role is actually very safe. The, the reports on Foreman are still not positive at all. They're, they have been talking about finding a third down back. So Lamar Miller could be seeding more of that work, but I don't think when it comes to the primary rushing downs, Lamar Miller is going to be challenged at all. Jason, I'm going to hand this uh, selection off to you. All right. If it's up to me, I'm going to uh, listen to the advice from last episode on the mid-round madness. Uh, I'm going to take Tariq Cohen because I do think that the floor is near the same. Obviously, if something were to happen to David Montgomery and T Tariq, is a fine play on his own, but should something happen to David Montgomery, Tariq Cohen becomes a, a, a star, and I don't think there's a world where Lamar Miller's arrow can really go up. You know what I mean? Sure. Like he, 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 nothing can happen this season other than just a, a, an asinine amount of tackles at the one-yard line, which even then still probably just means Deshaun Jackson runs in a bunch Watson. of touchdowns. Deshaun Watson. <laughs> um, so, uh, I thought yeah. you were going to say Deontay <laughs> Foreman and so really got off. I would uh, – I would go Tariq Cohen here, and then probably – I mean, I, I love Dante Pettis. Tyler Boyd uh, is is another good option. I would say those two are the wide receivers that come to mind. And I would rather have a, a wide receiver of that caliber I think over we take, Evan Ingram. I think we take Tyler Boyd because it, you can pick Cohen and Boyd to flex. Let's say you start week one, and you could play those guys in the flex position – uh, until you get to the buys, you can play the better matchup for Cohen and Boyd. Boyd's going to get off to a hot start without AJ Green potentially, or at least with a guaranteed target volume that makes you comfortable yes. with him in the flex spot. Yeah, his target count. Will I'm not. Hurt. I'm not ready to say that Tyler Boyd is a better player with AJ Green for the duration of his career, um, because targets matter, and you know we'll see what happens. But I think Boyd is probably the right pick here, and I haven't taken him in a mock yet. So Boyd and Pettis, they're both – I mean, they're almost identical in our personal rankings. Andy, you do have Boyd up at 20, which is the highest. Uh, but we've we've all got them 23 or 24 for Pettis and Boyd, the rest of them back-to-back. -back. So I it, personally, I would lean Pettis in the sense that I believe he, he can be the one for that team. And so because we've already got three star – solid wide receivers take the gamble at the higher upside, which I think is Pettis's. I do think the safer floor, because he's already broken out, is Tyler Boyd. They're both great picks. They're both wide receiver twos. I'm fine with either. Sure. And it, and if I if this were my team and I was running it, I would have taken Robbie Anderson. Here? Yeah. Over those guys? Yes. Interesting. Robbie Anderson and Evan Ingram. So those would have been your picks, right? Uh, More than likely, yeah. Okay. All right. Pettis went right after Boyd. I ended up taking Boyd. 
Um, it's still a fine pick. Will Fuller, James fine White. Fine pick. Matt Ryan and Baker going in this seventh round, turning it around. Breeze and Wilson in the eighth round. Um, believe it or not, you know, at least in this draft, Eric Ebron ended up going ahead of Evan Ingram. Hunter Henry and Ingram both went in the oh, eighth man. round. Ingram almost came back around almost. to us. Um, Alshon Jeffrey, Sammy Watkins, Allen Robinson off the board ahead of us. You know, this is, you know, it obviously took us a lot more time to make the picks at the sixth and seventh round, but that's how drafts are. I mean, it's pretty easy. You put your draft board together, you get stuff together, you got your favorites at the top, you know the most about those players. When you get into those middle rounds, you need to play through a few scenarios in your head. You need to play through a few scenarios with the opposing teams and how their le their teams are forming. So right now our roster, at running back, we have Barkley, Cook, and Cohen. At wide receiver, we have Evans, Woods, Edelman, and Boyd. We're on the clock here at the 8, 10, and 9, 0, 1. Well, so a couple of things stand out to me. Uh, obviously, Evan Ingram. <laughs> I see one of them. Evan Ingram left. Um, Vance McDonald is still there, which we're, we're pretty oh, high on. Yeah. And Carson Wentz, actually, you know, who would have been a okay-ish pick last round, is is there. So, I, you know, that's worth saying. But Lamar Miller, who we were deciding between sure. last round over the course of a turn, came back, and it's rare to get that kind of depth at Are we all back. on board to take Lamar Miller then since he came back around to us? Or is that need still there? Uh, yeah, the the need is still there. That's, that's good advice. The need for running back, it's always is there. Always, like still it's, there. it's always there. And guys, at least higher in the ADP left, Daryl Anderson, uh, or Darrell Anderson. Uh, good. Try, try, keep trying. Keep trying. Henderson. There it is. Harry and the Hendersons. We, <laughs> we got well, there. Here, here's a case. Miles Sanders is on the board as well. Yeah, that that, we, that was the name I was going to bring up. We stabilized our running back a little bit since the Lamar Miller decision. Are you looking at upside now with a guy like Miles Sanders who, you know, you say Lamar Miller might lose the passing game work, half PPR league. Miles Sanders could get all the passing game work. Yes. When, once Miles Sanders is acclimated, even though Jordan Howard is a fine player, he's a fine grinder, Miles Sanders was selected highly for a reason, I believe, for the Eagles to utilize him. But I think it will also take a couple weeks before the – to gain some might momentum. take more than that. Yeah, it might, sure. take, might take might even take like half a season. Yeah, it might take half a season. Sure, uh, but as you're running back four or five, I think that Miles Sanders is he's very interesting. So, it, which it, one do you like more, there, Jason? I I still like Lamar Miller because I know that he is the starting running back for a good offense. He, Mike, you brought up the stats a while ago top five in carries over the last few years, top five in yards over the last few years. It's just the touchdowns that don't come when you're talking about bolstering depth. And they depth. will not. <clears throat> when you're talking about bolstering depth, I think it's it's a good pick. I do believe, ironically, that despite talking about Lamar Miller being close to grabbing him last round because he was our fourth running back, that you you, you could pivot to Miles Sanders and go higher upside. I, I, want a soup, I want somebody that can step in and be a – superior flex player over the back half of the year. That's what I'm looking at at this point in time. Then, I, I And so I'm like, it, it, who's got the highest chance of doing that for me? Then I would say that might be Darrell Henderson. Right? Could I mean, be. I mean, if Did he become Darrell on this show? All of a sudden? Yeah, I don't Are know. Are you noticing this, De Brooks? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Why did he become Darrell on be this podcast <laughs> only? No, no. Because, because, because Mike called him 42 names? Yes. It's Daryl Be Henderson. Because, Darryl. I, because I infected Jason. Oh, my gosh. Where I was trying to read his name, and but I was also trying to read ahead at the exact same time. Darnell Anderson. <laughs> Darnell. Dar I would say Darnell Dar Anderson <laughs> would be such a good <laughs> pick here. Because, look, if you're just talking upside, like I, L Lamar Miller, much safer, his, his role is known. Henderson's upside but, is only there with injury. But Darnell not Anderson's darn, darn Darnell <laughs> Anderson's upside, if Todd Gurley goes down or if he ends up even – I mean, look how good C.J. Anderson was in the playoff run even when T Todd Gurley came back. No. Uh, the up, so you're you're off. No, you, I'll, you guys pick between Sanders and Miller. Don't give me Daryl Henderson. I'm still looking at filling out this roster right here. I would take, I want a super I'm take flex. Sanders. And I would take Lamar Miller. No, so great. Andy, it's going to no, be. No, it's up to Brooks. I'm not oh, taking right. this pick. I like that. Brooks, Producer your pick between, between Lamar Miller and Miles Sanders. I'm taking Darnell Anderson off the board. <laughs> 
<laughs> Miles Sanders or Lamar Miller? He's not Miller? even on the board. What do you got, Brooks? Who? Where do you lean? Uh, Lamar Miller. <laughs> Gosh, hear that excitement. Be so enthusiastic, Judge. Now, at wide receiver, there are uh, – so we, we can obviously do the Vance dance, take a tight end here, go – Carson Wentz, take the quarterback. It's, it's but Vance or Carson for me. To There's me, so many guys in the same tier at wide receiver. To me, Carson is not in the running, even though I love him, because there's so many guys. If I end up with Kyler Murray, Cam Newton, Jared Goff, I'm ecstatic. And I think there's a it's chance. It's also a 10 team league. One even of those. Fewer wa- notable quarterbacks off the board, you can take them even later. Yeah, I, I think one of those guys realistically could end up back with us, and I would be ecstatic. So, All right, let's speed it up. Mike, your mid-round madness guy, Marvin Jones, still on the clock. Larry Fitzgerald, MVS. MVS. Um, Sterling Shepard, who deceptively still going to be probably a top guy in that offense, but we've got Barkley, Christian Kirk on the board. Do you go with your mid-round guy, or do you go with Vance McDonald here, Mike, or do you have another idea in mind? Oh, man. Give uh, me that pick. Give me the uh, abridged analysis. Right. Uh, the, the abridged analysis is it would be Marvin Jones. Is, it w- would be at the top of the list unless I wanted to take Vance McDonald and not worry about it. Give me the pick. I'm not going to give you the pick. I'm going to take Marvin Jones. Oh! Marvin Jones is gone. Dang it. Uh, right. it upside play Darnell Anderson I, I went next. So D- Darnell Anderson <laughs> – my favorite nickname we've ever you know, had for just, a player. It's just really is <laughs> it's a just, different name. And my favorite nickname for this guy is a completely different human Darnell name. Darnell Anderson, a totally different name. Mr. Henderson, we apologize. It was just great because you you snafu'd the name in a huge fashion. <laughs> then you passed it on to Jason. He became Darrell for a reason. Yeah, and for no reason. He caught the virus. Darnell Anderson. <laughs> uh, look, what I would have done, and the reason I wanted you to pass the pick to me is because I think Andy was right. There's a lot of wide receivers in the same tier. A lot of guys that I really liked. MVS, I was sure, could make it back to us. And I would have taken a quarterback and MVS this coming turn, and I would have therefore taken Vance McDonald <laughs> with that last pick. therefore. So Vance McDonald, and then here I would have taken a quarterback and MVS. What if I told you? Yeah, we got Vance anyway. That Vance McDonald drops to us. I would be very happy. And that's going to happen because Jared Cook's going to go ahead of Vance in a lot of drafts, so Vance dropped. And Joku went ahead of Vance, and we got Vance at 10 10 And always pay attention to your draft. Which is Mike, it's Mike's fault. He took Marvin Jones, and it let Vance you pass. You are welcome. Yeah. Always pay attention to who has selected a tight end because if if most teams have already taken one, it's very unlikely it, in these types of leagues that a player is going to select two tight ends. They may end up taking a backup quarterback because a lot of fantasy players l- like to do that. Right. They like to waste a roster spot with that second quarterback. Know but, your league. But they're generally not going to take a second tight end. Give me the pick. Well, you, your pick's <laughs> going to be Marquez valdez scan It is not. No, at this point, there's no way I could pass up Cam Newton. I do think that the, the, the likelihood of people taking a second quarterback versus that second tight end would Cam happen. Cam Newton over Jared Goff here in the 11th round. Yes, Cam Newton to me is a top five fantasy quarterback. He – almost always is in fact he's he is always if he plays 16 games he's a top six fantasy quarterback 60 percent of the time is, every time and, almost and, always always is. and last year was a top three quarterback before his shoulder got injured he's healthy uh, he's back we're on fire his, oh this is the best his wide receiver core is amazing you know we're we're big fans of curtis samuel big fans of DJ Moore. Hey, I'm shocked you passed on uh, MVS there when you probably could have come back around. And I'll bet I still can. The truth of the matter is, is if you didn't take Cam there, which I gave you the pick, you took Cam Newton. Um, Kyler, Goff, Winston, and Rivers all went in the next turn. We only had three picks left in general. So I'm pretty happy with that decision, Jason. We got our final two picks right here. Uh, last three were Jones, uh, Vance Dance, and Cam Newton. Uh, I'll give him his due. <laughs> Ooh. And so, then, go ahead. With with the last two picks, looking at our roster, right? We've got four. Ru- <laughs> Andy <laughs> likes someone. Uh, we've got four running backs: Saquon, Dalvin Cook. That was Tariq borderline Cohen. inappropriate. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah. Give me, give me the pick, Jay. <laughs> uh, and Lamar Miller. At uh, we've got one more wide receiver with Mike Evans, Robert Woods, Julian Edelman, Tyler Boyd, and Marvin Jones. We've got a tight end. We've got a quarterback. So. It, we I need would, another wideout. I would say we grab one wideout, one running back to bolster the roster. I, I want, don't know I if want you're, Deshaun Jackson. That's what I thought. I want Deshaun Jackson in every league, and uh, I might draft him twice in some leagues. I might, I might give it a shot. Um, so you take him over. Has anyone ever done that? Like every year, 
it, it's you just you count down to the moment that someone drafts a player that's already been drafted. Has anyone ever drafted a player that's already on their team? Well, I, I'll tell you what. This year, I'm planning on drafting Daryl Henderson and Darnell Anderson back to back. <laughs> mm, good picks. So, uh, no, that is always fun when you're at the draft and somebody like, takes somebody that's already been taken. But in, in a, never the same team. In that would be incredible. A way that it is unironic, and they didn't mean to do it. So like, they're the ones that took them <laughs> earlier in the draft. Yes. Then they're the ones that draft them Hold later. Hold on. Hold on. Is is Marvin Jones still on the board? I will take Marvin jo No, you took him three rounds ago. That would, would right. be I think I have our two all picks. Moment. I think I have our two picks, and here's why I think that. Because I have two picks that I want that I know <laughs> are Andy's guys. So I've already got a two-thirds vote. Because Deshaun Jackson, I think, is a great pick here. We're we're super late. He's got oh, a I know your upside. other one too. And my other one is the burrito, Mr. Chipotle burrito himself, Matt Burrito. Matt Burrito is a great we're value. Matt Burrito here. Look, Jarek McKinnon. He had his knee swell up and had problems. Matt Burrito was a really efficient running back in Kyle Shanahan's system last year. To be able to grab a guy who could be. Uh, the starting running back for the, the San Francisco 49ers in a Kyle Shanahan offense who's proven he could do it. I mean, you'll know week one if Burita has value or not, so we can cut him easily, or he's got value, we can trade him or start him. So I, uh, that's where I would go. But, Mike, do you see someone you think you could convince <clears throat> me off of? The rookies, Justice Hill, Devin Singletary. Well, Kalen Balazs is Kalen there. Balazs but is I would take there. Burita over Balazs because the, the offensive system being a better uh, – situation for burrito but i mean it, look, i think know, it's a split situation for both guys yeah that's we know burrito had huge success last year but it was also a a, v, a opportunistic of him and i don't i don't think the situation will be nearly the same like kalen Balage is there speaking of opportunistic justin jackson is still there mm. if, if melvin gordon mm. is going to hold out justin I'm, jackson will be a great pick here uh no, because you're going to cut him. If he, well, yeah, if he if he holds out, you're 100 percent right. Yes. At least you could decide you can cut that before the season. Maybe sign Matt Burita. And speaking yeah, right? of, of mean, knowing who is going to be a, a useful guy for you in week one, you're going to know. I don't. If Justin I Jackson don't mind will. that argument because at least before the season, you can cut Justin Jackson and potentially sign Burita or Bolage or Naeem Hines or Devin Singletary if he starts. Justice Hill. There's a lot right. of options here. I do like – this is the thing when you're at your last pick. What you don't want to do is get a guy who maybe could develop over the course of a season with your last pick. You want to get a guy who you know week one, what you have and what you don't. You do have that with Justin Jackson because if Melvin Gordon stays out, then you've got a great option. If he's back, you cut him and sign someone else. Plus, I like do you know that. the victory lap you get to do when you make him your last pick and then the bad news happens? Oh, yeah, it was like when I – like, I already got him. I saw the future. It's like when I drafted James Conner with my last pick and then cut him Sunday night. And yeah, that was – The Monday before that wasn't Le as nice. Bell decided he wasn't playing football. Mm. All that right, Mike. That felt bad. You convinced me, and um, I was happy I got Deshaun Jackson, so I'm happy there. Uh, Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Tariq Cohen, Lamar Miller, and Justin Jackson at the running back position. Two running back, three wide receiver league with a flex. Evans, as in Mike Evans, Robert Woods, Julian Edelman, Tyler Boyd, Marvin Jones, and Djax at the wide receiver position in a league that needs some extra reinforcements at the wide out. And then we got Vance McDonald in the 10th round, got Cam Newton in the 11th round. There's, I'm not sure you can execute late no. round tight end and quarterback better than that. You cannot. That's incredible value. Um, so that's our, that's our team. We did it. <laughs> we did it. That, you know, Halfway through, I wasn't sure we were going to make it. Yeah, you're never quite sure on the Fantasy Footballers podcast. But, look, if you need some help with your draft, be sure to check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Hope you enjoyed the mock draft. Check it out on YouTube. Uh our producers, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, they do a great job with these mock draft episodes of getting the draft board up on the video. You didn't screw anything up, did you? Did you? Not this time. Because I'm talking <laughs> you up right now. So you can watch Twitter along. Twitter followers are coming. And be very angry. We <clears throat> didn't select the player that you wanted us to select. Mm. Yeah. So That was very rude of you, um, man. I would have done it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, uh, hey, look, 
We also want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. A reminder, uh, yesterday a Deshaun Watson signed jersey went for $82.36. All right. If you sign up with the registration code BALLERS, you save 5 bucks on your first sports memorabilia purchase. You can deck out whatever room you watch football in with your favorite players at or Pristine just Auction. Unbelievable com. gifts, too. If you've got a... Uh, Someone with a birthday coming up, and you want to get him. Is that something. a hint? Or you know that someone? I'm like you know someone who loves gifts. I, I mean, I love gifts. I know a few people <laughs> that like gifts. I love gifts. Hey, we and we, we will see you on Monday. Oh goodness, it starts. Let's go. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. In Foot Clan, don't forget you can subscribe to The Athletic today and enjoy coverage that goes beyond the game recaps to provide smarter analysis and deeper perspective about teams. Model is simple. No web ads, no pop-ups, no autoplay videos. Get full access to all national and local college football coverage, plus stories, podcasts, and videos from all sports. Go to theathletic.com slash footballers for 40% off a yearly subscription that comes up to $2.99 a month when you subscribe at theathletic.com slash footballers.